So where should you be buying your books? Amazon, big book chain retailers like Barnes & Noble and Indigo, or your local independent bookstore. I'm going to be buying books from each of their online stores to determine which one is the best, at least for me. I've always wanted to compare side by side these types of stores to see which one I think is the best. For me personally you know in general you hear a lot of people saying oh amazon's always cheaper or always faster or whatever and i just want to see if that's actually the case so first i just want to point out that this is going to be really dependent on where you're located so i'm located in the biggest city in canada toronto so i have a lot of options for local independent booksellers and then i also have access to a large chain retailer called Indigo, which is basically like Barnes & Noble in the States. And then of course, I also have access to Amazon Canada. I would assume that the experience that I have is going to be similar to people who live in other major cities in Canada, as well as major cities in the US. Um, and because this is all going to be their online stores only, it's not really dependent on location. It's really dependent on the postal service at, at a certain point. So this is what I want to be comparing. First, I want to compare price. Then I want to compare availability. Third, I want to look at loyalty programs or rewards or perks. Fourth, I want to compare the user experience on all the websites. I want to see how easy it is to actually navigate the website and all of that kind of stuff, but also how easy it is to find books that you weren't looking for using a browse feature. Fifth, I want to talk about processing times. So I'm really just looking for the time between when I click, you know, pay to when I receive the email that is on its way to me. And finally, we're going to talk about shipping costs. This video is going to be in three parts. One's going to be here. The other is going to be you actually watching me on the websites and purchasing them. And then finally, it's going to be a final thought when I, once I receive all of my orders. So price, availability, processing times, user experience, that's all going to come later. I want to talk about loyalty programs first before we start anything else. So first I just want to talk a little bit about where I'm going to be ordering from. First is going to be Amazon, of course. Next is going to be Indigo, which is basically Canada's big book retailer. And then I have three local independent bookstores. So the first of those local independent bookstores is a sci-fi and fantasy only bookstore called Back of Phoenix. All they do is sci-fi, fantasy, and you know things adjacent to that. Next is Book City. They have lots of locations. There's one literally around the corner from my house. And then finally is Type Books. They also have several locations and I also go to several of their locations. So let's talk about the loyalty programs. Indigo has something called Plum. The basic Plum is you get points, although it's not great to bank points, and then you can spend it. The kind of point to dollar ratio is not great. Um, and then you also get like a little a couple other little things like free shipping, I think over or under is $35 or something like that. Um, it's not great. If you pay $40 a year, you get 10% off everything. And you also still get the points and you get free shipping and like exclusive deals and events and, and stuff like that. Next we have Amazon, no specifically book loyalty program. They of course have Amazon Prime, which is $100 a month in Canada at least. And you get faster shipping and free shipping on your orders. I don't think there's anyone who only buys books from Amazon. And that's like their sole reason for having Prime. I'm pretty sure the sole reason for having Prime are like the other perks in addition to the free shipping. But that's not like a selling feature, I think, for book related purchasing from Amazon. You also get lots of other Amazon goodies when it comes to Prime for books. Back of Phoenix has a loyalty program as well. You can bank 10% of all of your purchases. And then when you hit $50, you can spend it. That adds up fast, especially for me because I mostly read sci-fi and fantasy. Book City, funnily enough, also has a loyalty program. I did not know about it, which is 
kind of weird because I've been shopping there for like 20 years. I've never been asked to sign up for it. I've never been asked for my card. So I guess <laughs> bad customer service there. But in doing my research, I found out that you can get 10% off all of your purchases and 20% off new hardcovers. You get $5 off when you spend $300 and $5 off on your birthday. Would have been nice to know that because I spend a lot of money there, but here we are. And then Type Books is our only store that has no loyalty program, at least none that I could find. Okay, so now I will set up and I will share my screen with you and we'll go through the book shopping experience together and we'll talk about, you know, price availability and the actual experience of using the website and and all of that and browsing. And then we'll wait about a week and I'll get everything in the mail and then I'll come back and talk about processing times and shipping and all that stuff. I want to quickly just kind of take a look at their user interface for books. Um, Indigo, I'm in their books tab because they, they sell other things too and whatever. In here, it's mostly just book uh, bestsellers. They always have 40% off booksellers. They're not up to 40%, I think. It's most of the time, it's like 20. Um, new and hot. It's like, to me, it's not really interesting to browse because it's kind of like generic things all the time. Amazon, I'm going to assume it's kind of generic as well. No, nothing, nothing to write home about with that. Buck Phoenix, I really like the way they do things. Um, they have, their homepage is basically new releases. What is this? Secret Santa? What is that? It looks like an old horror movie. The Office meets Stephen King dressed up in holiday tinsel and this fun, festive, and frightening horror comedy set during the horror publishing boom of the 80s. Okay. Oh my god. I'm just gonna buy this right now. That didn't- this is what I mean, like, I want to be inspired to buy stuff, you know? So, good job putting that there and it really caught my eye. That's mostly the cover, not them, but whatever. So every week they, they kind of separate all their stuff and then they also have like their, um, their pre-orders on the side. They also have a separate page just for like featured pre-orders. I also like their staff picks. Um, both in store and online. I've read a lot of really great books because of this page and in store. And I also like that it like, tells you who it's from because I like to talk about it when I actually read it. Um, I go here all the time. So yeah, I've, I've read many of these things and had discussions with people because of that. Book City, do they have a thing? Yeah, so I mean, books are at the bottom of their list, like Indigo and Amazon, and um, pretty pretty generic as well. Um, very similar to the front page of Rock of Phoenix. Um, it's it's pretty it's decently laid out. These are not necessarily new books. Um, they're kind of like a mix of books. Um, not really great in terms of like categories it would be kind of nice to see like you know certain genres but not bad and type books um they're more i think they they're more curated than book city for example they have like certain categories that change all the time you got your pre-orders I think that's really great to pre-order books from your local indie bookstore if you're able to the thing i like about type books is they don't have a lot per page. Sometimes I find it like very overwhelming if there's like 20 pages. So it's kind of cool just to see, you know, a handful of pages, which is nice. What's this mystery bag? What's that? Okay, a questionnaire and they, okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, so let's compare prices now. So let's go with, so first of all, Back of Phoenix, um, they only sell sci-fi and fantasy. So let's start with the, let's start with the fantasy just to kind of like get them out of the way because we already have one book in our cart from them. Okay, so the, so I'm gonna go with The Blinding Knife, which is book two in the Lightbringer series I really enjoyed. So Indigo has for $22.99, um, 
Amazon has for $22.76, so basically the exact same price. Bucket Phoenix has for $22.99 as well. And Wick City has it for $22.992, but it's not in stock, it's special order. Type does not have it, that's not surprising though. That's interesting. That these are that the two indies that do have it are the 20 cents more expensive than Amazon. Okay, so the next book I want to do is the archive of the forgotten. So Indigo is paperback, $22. Do these not come in hardcover? I guess not. They just this just came out, so it must just be paperback. Um says $20 there. So Archive of the Forgotten on Amazon paperback is $21.78 and Archive of the and it's $22 on um, Back of Phoenix as well. $22 on Book City. They also don't have it. Uh, again, not really surprising for them. Oh, the type has it. No, it doesn't. Okay, so we have our two books plus our impulse purchase with um, <laughs> With what's it called secret santa okay so now that we've compared prices for the sci-fi and fantasy books that i was looking at let's go into other books i'm thinking about okay so the paperback of this on indigo is 22 dollars city is 22 dollars as well and it doesn't it's not on type so so far the indies are keeping up with with amazon and indigo and Indigo is like 20 cents cheaper, which is not really, I don't factor that in when I'm buying, when I'm buying like, you know, $20 items, I don't care if it's 20 cents cheaper, right? I'm curious to see about books on type versus everywhere else. I think type's a little bit more expensive. Okay, so another book that I thought type would have, I don't know how to pronounce this, I'm pretty sure it's Alatsue, I think. Uh, they don't have it, which I'm kind of surprised about. Uh, Indigo has it for $26.99, that's the hardcover, um, 20 cents cheaper, or, or 25 cents cheaper, whatever, on, uh, on Amazon, and Book City has $26.99, again, not, same price as Indigo, but, uh, not in stock. I'm not looking for things that I have to special order, because, I, like, that's gonna add to the processing times, and that's, like, it's like a different video. <laughs> so type I'm really surprised about. I did this like a different way. Let's um let's just pick let's just pick a book at random. Because I would want to see how they compare to like price wise. You know what I really liked? What's that book? My year of rest and relaxation. What's that book? It's in stock. It's ten percent off because it's new. So 3240. Okay, so this is where the discrepancy starts to pop up. On Book City, we have 3240. Normally $36. It's 10% off, probably because it's new. And it is in stock. So on um, Amazon is 2534. That's a pretty big difference in in my mind. Um, and then on Indigo, it's it's also 2560, so same price as Amazon basically. So that's a 28% difference, which that's that's when it starts to be like a big difference. Um, so far we haven't seen that. So that's um, that's interesting. Let's pick another one. And it's $36, the regular price on type. So type is the most expensive here in this case. Let's see Felix Ever After because it's it's been up for a little bit. So Felix Ever After on type is $23.99. $21.59 at Book City. Amazon is $23.75, so Book City to Indie is cheaper. And $23.99 on Indigo as well. So basically the exact same price across most of them except for Book City. It's um it's 10% off. So there you go. I think that's part of their little program though. So the regular price is $23.99, so it's pretty much the same across all of those as well. Okay, so we have Parasite, which is a horror manga, which is out of stock, so it's going to ship um, in like two weeks on Indigo, but Amazon has it. That's a whole $11.99, so I have to pay for shipping now. Great. Perfect. Okay, so now we just need to wait for everything to arrive. Um, I'm I'm going to have everything shipped instead of picking it up from the store just because it might be like different for processing times and I don't want to, you know, 
I don't want to screw with all of that. So I'm going to place all my orders tonight. It's Sunday night. It's Sunday, November 15th. And then once I receive everything, um, I will then update with my final thoughts on who I personally prefer and kind of rank them based off of a lot of things we already talked about, but then I'll have my final thoughts on everything there. Okay, so it's been about nine days now and I have my stack of books, everything has arrived. So first let's just go quickly over shipping costs, like final shipping costs. Indigo was free because I have Plum Plus. I kind of do like a quick little look and if you didn't have Plum Plus, it would be about nine dollars or so. Amazon was also free because I have Prime. But I think if you don't have Prime and you just do like regular candle shipping, it's about $7. Back of Phoenix was $14 for three books. Book City was $10. They have a flat $10 fee for anything under $100 in the Toronto area. Anything outside of Toronto is distance and weight based. And then also if you spend over $100, it's free at least within the city. Type Books actually has two shipping methods. I went with the $12 method, which is just regular shipping. It was with Pure Later because I, I didn't know if it was going to affect anything, so I went with just the plain default shipping method. They also have a different shipping method, which is $8. It's called Local Delivery, but they only do this a couple times a week. I also don't know if I talked about what I got from Type. I think I was originally going to get the mystery bag, but then I ended up getting a single book instead. It's because, I did, again, I didn't want to skew anything because I was going to add processing time. So I don't know if I talked about that, but I did that. So now let's talk about processing times. I placed all my orders right after each other on a Sunday night, which I discovered is probably not the best day to do that, but it, we did it and it's over and it's fine. So I didn't get anything on the Monday. Not really surprising. I think a lot of companies are trying to catch up for the weekend. On Tuesday, I received basically right after each other all shipping notifications except for Amazon. Tuesday morning, Back of Phoenix actually called me and asked if I wanted to use my points to basically get my entire order for free. So then all of those stores other than Amazon shipped out on Tuesday. Amazon sent the shipping notification on Wednesday morning and it was there before I got home. So on Wednesday, Amazon was the only thing that arrived that day. Kind of as expected though. The thing when you're comparing services is I didn't I don't really want to compare the shipping speeds except for with Amazon because you're paying for that special fast shipping by using Prime and paying for Prime every single year. For everything else, I'm not counting it because they all use the same shipping service, except for type of books, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, but Amazon used their own shipping service, which you pay extra for, so I consider it more of a perk, like a loyalty perk than anything else. And if we're going to be talking about loyalty program perks with other companies, I think it's only fair to talk about fast shipping with Prime. So Thursday I received two different orders, the first being delivered by Pure Later instead of Canada Post, and that was from Type Books. I ended up going with Dark Archives. This just seems really really cool. It's basically a librarian's research on the history of books bound in skin. So that just seemed really cool. I saw it when I was kind of browsing a little bit after I stopped filming, and I thought, yeah, I'm gonna get that. And then Canada Post delivered my Becca Phoenix order as well on Thursday. Then I checked the tracking number on Thursday night to see when I was expecting my other two packages. And the tracking numbers both said Friday, so I thought, oh, that's great. But then it didn't happen because Canada Post is overwhelmed as expected this time of year. So on Monday, I received my Book City order again before I even got home. And then the next day on Tuesday, I received my indigo order as well. So final thoughts, they're all kind of the same. They all processed on the same day. They all got to me within, you know, a couple of days of each other. That was mostly due to can of post delays, otherwise they would be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday probably. And then they're all kind of the same in terms of price too, except for type books, which was either they didn't have the book for the most part of the things I was searching for which isn't really fair because 
while I do shop there, I don't tend to seek out a lot of the books that they have. I'm more of a browser there than I am a searcher there, if that makes sense. And sometimes they were more expensive and sometimes they were the same. Back in Phoenix were basically the exact same in terms of price and then the same in terms of price to Indigo and Amazon. If you're looking to save 20 cents on a $20 item, Amazon is the place to go, I guess. But other than that, Amazon has the exact same prices, basically, as especially Indigo and two of the independents. The browse feature, I think, was best on Back of Enix's website. I really like their recommendations and their staff picks and their front page. They have a similar front page to Book City, but I just tend to prefer the way Back of Phoenix is all laid out, and I really like their tailored recommendations. They have a different recommendations page, which I didn't even show, which is like, if you like this kind of thing, you'll like this, which I really, really enjoy. Amazon Indigo, they're kind of the same in terms of browse feature. I didn't love either one of them, to be honest. They're just kind of generic. Nothing ever jumps out at me, either because I've already read a lot of those books because they're like, you know, bestsellers or whatever, or I already know about them and I just don't care to get them. Okay, so now that I've kind of gone over everything, I now want to rank them in terms of my favorite and explain why. So tied for number one, I really can't decide which one I like because I like them for two different reasons, is Indigo and Back of Phoenix. So the reason why I love Indigo so much is because they have, a, I think they have a great loyalty program if you pay for it. If you just get the basic pro program, it's not really anything special. But with the Plum Plus for $40 a year, you get 10% off all of your books. You get your free shipping, you get your points, you get your extra points for certain things, and you get your extra deals for certain things. And I love Back of Phoenix because they have amazing customer service, both online, on the phone, and in person. And they have, I think, a really great loyalty program for what they can offer. And for me, the user experience on the website is probably the best in terms of finding books that I didn't know I wanted or finding books that I've never never heard of. Number two, I'm gonna go with Amazon. Just because their price and availability was so consistent across any title that I was looking at, very rarely are you gonna see, especially a newer book that they don't have in stock, that they aren't going to get more of. They're not great for browsing, but if you know what you're looking for, you know, you just type in the search bar and then it appears in two days or three days or whatever. And I think the consistency with that is important, especially when you're looking for something that you're going to be buying fairly frequently. Amazon is just kind of bland though, like you're not really getting a lot of extra value with your experience. You're not getting things like interesting picks, like recommendations, like you are with an indie store, for example, but they do what they do well, you know, they don't, there's kind of a no frills sort of thing with them. All their books were consistently priced. I do want to say though that all of the books, when I received them, I actually checked the back of the book where like the actual price from like the publisher stamped compared to what I actually paid and they're all the same across the board. So none of these places are price gouging, but you know, everything is very consistent. But more importantly, the availability is consistent. If I want a book from, you know, the last 10 years or something, and I type it in, chances are it's going to be there. They're also a great place to look for ebooks as well, but with a lot of things, consistency is key. And say what you will about Amazon, but they are consistent. And then I'm actually going to tie Book City and Type Books for number three, just because it's like my personal opinion on why one would be kind of lower than the other. I don't really think that's fair. So the reason why I like Book City is because their prices are consistent with Back of Phoenix and Indigo and Amazon for the most part, unless you want to save 20 cents on a book. I would say about half the time that I'm looking for a book, they had it in their inventory, but it was on order. For type books, I really enjoy their browse feature. I'm really intrigued by this mystery bag and I can't wait to get mine. And I think they're a more interesting bookstore to support because they are kind of always thinking of the actual store itself and curating the store to 
be something very specific. I have never bought a book online from Book City or Type. They're more of a browse kind of store for me. So it was kind of an interesting experience to compare like a search feature. And while Type Books had a very similar online browse system to their in-store browse system, Book City definitely didn't. It just wasn't it just wasn't it for me with them. So there's definitely a disconnect between in-store and, and online with Book City, but Type Books is basically the same kind of user experience as in-store. Type Books is definitely a store that I go to browse. I don't typically go there thinking like, I want to get this book. And that's basically what I did online too. I got a book I had never heard of, but I just thought was really, really cool. One of the reasons why I really want to do this experiment is because I hear from people all the time, and not just people like in the online book community, but people that I know personally, they always say, oh, Amazon is so much cheaper. That's why I always buy my books on Amazon. But I hear a lot of people who I know locally who say, oh yeah, Amazon is so much cheaper, but it's not. I think we are just so used to having Amazon always be inexpensive because they were. They were selling books at cost for a very, very long time. And then over time, you would slowly start to see newer titles be the same price on Indigo or like whatever. So I think those days are over, but the perception that Amazon is cheaper is still there, which is very, very interesting because it was so gradual over time. Again, I'm talking about Canada and probably US, but because it was so gradual, our perceptions of it remained the same even though they're now the exact same price so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you got a lot of value out of it i know this doesn't you know mean anything to a lot of the world because it's very specific to canada and the u.s possibly even the uk but i'm not totally sure about their market uh, canada and the u.s are much more similar doing this experiment has given me a lot of ideas on like other things i'm curious about especially that whole kind of like creep factor with Amazon slowly catching up in price so I'm I just have like a lot of ideas for that kind of stuff so if you like this kind of video stay tuned for more because I'm hoping to do another one as soon as I kind of narrow down exactly what I want to do right now all the ideas are a little bit too broad to execute I think but I'm very excited and I'm very inspired to do other little experiments like this so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one